Okay, turn your Bible with me to book of Colossians as we are studying the book of Colossians. Turn with me to the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse number 22 through 25 and chapter 4, verse number 1. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 21, uh, 22 through 25, and chapter 4, verse number 1. May I request, man of God and woman of God, to honor God's word, would you please stand? And the Bible says, Servants, obey in all things, your masters according to the flesh. Not with eye service as man pleases, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord, he shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Chapter 4, verse number 1. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. And all God's people said, Amen. Shall we pray? Our dearest loving Heavenly Father, please teach us today from this scripture that we have read. There are masters here in this room. There are servants in this room. But ultimately we are all servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. Teach us, O oh God, to behave and to live our life and to treat others the way that we would expect God to treat us. O oh Lord, help us to be humble. Please teach us thy ways. We pray that thou will give us a receptive heart and an alert mind today, so we may listen to thy word. Fill me with thy Holy Spirit. Give me the words of utterance. Give me unctions this morning, O God. May I speak all that you want me to speak. Cover me behind thy cross so that Jesus Christ may be glorified. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. From back. We are nearing the completion of the studies of the book of Colossians. We have entered to chapter 4 today, the last chapter of the book of Colossians. And once we finish this study in the book of Colossians, we will go into Old Testament. And we will uh, try to spend a few weeks and months in the Old Testament studying some wonderful things what the Lord has been teaching me for the past few months in my studies. Today, as we look into the scripture about servants and masters, May we sit with a receptive heart and an alert mind. And may we ask God as this message is preached. Lord, teach me. You may be a servant to somebody today. You may be a master to somebody today. You may be a servant to a master and you may be a master to your servant in some aspects in your office. In your business, in whatsoever job that you have been blessed with by God. 
May the Lord open up our hearts today. And may we humble ourselves and allow the Lord to speak to our heart. And if the Lord speaks to your heart today, may we accept the truth and walk in it. Amen. The Bible tells us servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. This is not to do anything with the spiritual life. Of course everything is connected with the spiritual life. But this is talking about how you Carry your life in this world as you live, as you work. You work in the office, you work uh, 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 anywhere, maybe whatever job that God has blessed you with. And you're working for someone who pays you. Maybe you are paid by a businessman, maybe you are paid by the government, maybe you are paid um, uh, in whatever way it is. When you receive a payment from somebody, you become a servant to that master. Now, when it, the, the word servant does not diminish your status, it just simply means you're working for somebody. You're getting it? So, when the Bible says servant, it's not saying, no, it's just you are working for someone to help him or her, and uh, it's just that some, you have a boss over you. Who tells you what to do. Who expects you to do certain things. And so you become a servant because you are paid. And the Bible talks to everybody. Now ultimately you and I are servants. Whether you want to accept it or not. And I, I believe everybody believes in that and loves that. Right? We are all the servants of God. We are the servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the apostles write the book, we find, we, we read in the Bible, the servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul calls himself, Peter calls himself as a fellow servant. We are all servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are all supposed to serve one another. So everyone is boss and everyone is a servant. But as a Christian, what can we glean from this scripture today? Servants, you, you servants, obey. Now this is hard. When pride takes over, these next four words is hard. No, no, this, you know, pride is something we become... Something called spiritual pride. I'm not going to obey anybody. Only God. You see? I'm not going to obey anybody. Only God. Who is, you know, I just feel, you know, we, we have this spiritual pride. Suddenly, automatically it comes up. Only God I will obey. No, God says, hey, really you obey me? Then you obey your master. If you truly obey me, then you obey your master. If you truly love me, then you obey, uh, love my children. Servants, obey in, next word, all things. It's difficult, right? Now the Bible doesn't say obey the bad things. No, no, no. What if your master tells, hey, come on, man, let's go out and chill out, smoke and do all these things. Let's go and fornicate. You're supposed to obey that? No! As long as it does not make you to compromise your faith. And so, servants, you obey in all things your master according to the flesh. If you're working for somebody, if you're being paid by somebody, as a Christian, this is not for unbelievers. This is for Christian. And by the way, your master may be an unbeliever. You are a Christian, you are a believer, and you have a master who is paying you, who, for whom you work for, maybe an unbeliever, 
And as a believer, how do you work for Him? God says, you obey that unbeliever in all things. God said it, I'm not saying, in all things. You obey your masters. Servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. So there's no way like only God I will obey. No. According to the flesh. He tells you. He's paying you. You see that as a Christian. This is what I, I believe. As a Christian. If you are working for somebody. You know what you do? You go before in time. And leave the office after five minutes. Your ultimate job is. To bring a profit to your master. That's called stewardship. You see, you know who is a steward? What is stewardship? Stewardship is, a, you are a manager. God has given you certain responsibility on this earth. He has given you certain um, job and he gives you and your, dis, your duty is to put it in such a way and that you bring profit to your master. You understanding? That is the work of a steward. Maybe if you give you ten, uh, five talents, your duty is not to bury under the ground, but to use that five talents and multiply and present to your master with multiply talents. We read that in the parables, right? We read Jesus teaching us, someone was given one talent, another two talent, another five talent, and the master goes away. And then when he comes back after a few months or years, he now calls them and says, Come on, what did you do with what I gave you? The one with the five talents, give ten talents to the master. That's stewardship. You, everybody here has been given by God, the Lord Jesus Christ, talents. And you are given responsibility. You are given certain things, gifts and Spiritual gifts. And are we using it to multiply for the glory of God? One day God is going to call you. And ask you, what are you doing? Now that's the spiritual thing. But we, we come here on, the, uh, on this. With the flesh. In the flesh. You are a steward. You are supposed to manage things. Your, your, your master has given you a responsibility. You sit on that desk. You take, do, do all this work. You go there and you do this work. You are, a, uh, you, you are supposed to take care of the accounts. You are supposed to teach. You are supposed to do this. You are supposed to clean. You are supposed to uh, manage this thing. Uh, you are supposed to... Uh, uh, import, export, you're supposed to uh, just keep, uh, call the people, inform, receptionist or whatever job that God has given you through your earthly master. Maybe he's an unbeliever. Even if he's an unbeliever, God expects you and I to obey that master in all things. That's what God says. And as a Christian, we are called to go one mile extra. In all things. So what I do, if I'm a servant to somebody, you know what I, my job is to be? My job is to bring profit to the one who pays me. And so what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to go five minutes late. I'm going to go five minutes early. And I'm going to leave my office five minutes late. You're getting it? That's good testimony. That's good. That's Christian life. You are bringing profit to your master. Your spiritual life shows in this. How, are, how is your relationship with God? That is shown with what you do with your master down here. My job, my, I want to, I'm, a, I'm a Christian and I want to do in such a way that brings glory to God by serving my master on earth. I'm going to bring profit to him and he's going to look at my life and I have an opportunity to share the gospel. Why are you doing this? How come you work so hard? Hey, listen, if you think that you cannot 
then you and you don't like what you're doing you know what the thing you must do if you're not able to respect that master then you need to leave that job and find a job where you can respect your master obey your master and bring profit to that master i don't like the job i don't want to go to there i don't he is just then you know what as a christian what you must do find such a job where you can respect that master in all thing as long as it does not compromise with your faith okay keep that in mind obey in all thing and bring profit to that master as a christian that is our responsibility that's called stewardship and god delights in that god delights and god wants it that's what god says go an extra mile if someone calls you you are supposed to multiply you are supposed to bring profit to your master multiply the talent what has been given to you it's christian life people are going to watch wow amazing i don't i don't i have so many people who work for me but why are you different the bible tells me to do that i may not like it but i want to obey what the bible says that's testimonies amen people are watching that that the people without christ should have no blames nothing to blame you be blameless the bible says servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh not with eye service oh he's coming huh let me do it. what and he's gone no not with eye service you see bible this is i'm not saying it so please please do understand the lord whom you love you say that you love him jesus christ whom you love you say that you you, you call jesus christ as your lord and your savior and god god said this This is not man's word this is not paul saying this is god's word god says this not with eye service as man pleasers but singleness of heart what is a singleness of heart i'm going to bring glory to god by being faithful in job that god has given me i'm going to be faithful single my what is my single utmost desire and utmost thing to do singleness of heart through these i'm going to bring glory to god singleness of heart fearing god i'm not fearing my master on earth i am supposed to bring profit to him with the job that he has given me because he pays me she pays me but i'm not fearing him i fear god you see my fear is towards god i love i don't fear him because of he's going to bash me i fear him because i love him and because i love him i love his word and because i love his word i will obey my master on earth in all things fearing god with singleness of heart my singleness of heart is to bring profit to my master because i am the manager whatever job you have whatever job god god has given you you are a manager on earth whatever name titles you may get a receptionist or a teacher or a professor or a or a um uh, or a engineer the your government servant whatever title you have Biblically you are a steward you are a manager you are working on behalf you are working for Christ in obedience to that master your job is to bring profit to him because you love God you fear God you have singleness of heart and that singleness of heart is to bring glory to God glory to God i don't know if you have watched a movie called flywheel great movie flywheel 
This man who is unsaved, he, he, he cheats people by selling cars. He is a cheater. And then he gets saved. He, he is against all this. Um, he is against Christianity. His wife is a Christian. She goes to a good, sound, Bible-believing church, a Baptist church. Uh, uh, but this man has nothing to do with God. He's cheating people. And then when the, the pastor of their church comes one day to buy a car, and he cheats the pastor also. <laughs> and the pastor has no idea. And the pastor prays for him. He says, can I pray for you? He says, yeah. And the pastor prays, Lord, as he has shown kindness towards me, may you also show kindness to him. And this guy gets shocked now. <laughs> I've cheated the pastor, now God is going to take care of me. And one fine day, God gets his attention. And he gets saved. And then he repents and, he, and he, God just changes and he just goes and gives, just like Zacchaeus. Pays back. You know what God does? God gets pleased with his life. And God blesses him double fold. What your job is to bring glory to God because you fear God. Your singleness of heart is, I want to bring glory to God. And so, I'm going to bring profit to my master. Whatever job you handle, your duty is to bring glory to God by respecting that master that God has given you, who pays you, and you're going to bring profit to him. And he's going to watch your life. And by the way, even if he doesn't watch, even if he does not appreciate, you know what God says? I've seen your work. Amen? God watches us. Sometimes man may fail to appreciate you. But you know what? God knows. He is watching. And he is raising you up. Amen? Amen. When I am down. And all my soul so weary. When troubles come. I won't sing that. Sister Sarah sings good. I watched that video on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. He raises. Amen? He raises us up. People may not watch us, but God is watching. So servants, obey in all things your master according to the flesh. So you obey your master in your flesh. Not with eye service. You are not just doing only when they look at you. Even when they are not looking, you are still faithful in what you have been appointed. Amen? As man pleasers, don't try to please. Don't do it so that master will say, oh, good job. And when he's gone or she's gone, you're not doing anything. No, you're being faithful. But in singleness of heart, what is your singleness? Glory to God. Fearing God. In the other verses, if you read, in Colossians. Come with me to Colossians chapter 6. Same thing Apostle Paul writes here. Through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Bible says in verse number 5, in chapter 6 of Ephesians. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. With fear and trembling. Oh boy. Fear and trembling. You know as a Christian. As you keep growing. The Lord expects you to raise your standard of living. Your spiritual standard. Just one more step ahead. That the glory of God may radiate in your life. So people may just like. Why he or she is so different from others. Why? Because the Holy Ghost resides in you. Because you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service and man pleasers, but as the servants of Christ. Doing the will of God from the heart. See, this is God's will that you obey. Amen? 
This is God's will that you obey your masters and bring profit. This is God's will. And you know what's the safest place to be in? In the will of God. Amen? In the will of God. I'd rather get less salary and be in the will of God than more salary and out of the will of God. Not with eye service as man pleases, but as the servants of Christ. You may be a servant to the master, but still you and I are servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God has given you a job under this master. He might be an unbeliever, and yet you are called to obey and serve. With fear, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Doing the will of God is the greatest accomplishment. Knowing the will of God is the greatest knowledge. Finding the will of God is the greatest discovery. With good, uh, with good will, doing service as to the Lord. And not to men. I'm not doing it. I'm doing it to the Lord. Amen. Yeah, I'm serving him. Yes, he's my master. Yes, he or she is paying me. But I am going to do it with all my heart unto the Lord. So God is pleased and my master is happy. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be born or free. Whether he is unbeliever or believer. What you sow, is, you shall reap. If you sow papaya, you'll reap coconut. No, you'll reap papaya. Amen? Amen? What you sow, you shall reap. It doesn't matter who you are, whether believer or unbeliever. Bond or free. So do it. As a Christian, we are supposed to do everything for the glory of God. God is watching me. I'm going to serve. This is the job God has given me. And I am, yes, I'm his servant, but I'm the servant of Christ first. And so my duty is to serve Christ through this job. That's your ministry. You may be a receptionist. You are, you are in the ministry. As a receptionist, you are a minister. You may be an accountant. That's your ministry. And you're serving Christ through that. You may be a teacher. That's your ministry. You're serving Christ. You may be a businessman. That's your ministry. You're serving Christ. You're getting it. You are a steward on this earth. God has given you talent. You know why you are an accountant? Because God thought you are, you are able to do that job better. So God made you an accountant. You know why you're a teacher? Because God knows you can do a better job than anybody. That's why you're a teacher. You're a professor. You know why you're a receptionist? Because God knows you're good at it and God made you that. And now God says, hey, I want you to use that great talent that I've given and be a good testimony. Remember, Maybe that person is a master, but first, God is your master. You are servant to Christ, and we are going to serve the Lord. Even though we are on the flesh here, with all this thing, I'm serving God. I'm giving glory to God. You may be a salesman. You may be a carpenter. You may be a, um, you may be a mason. You may be a shopkeeper. You may be a businessman. You may be whoever you are. I'm going to bring glory and honor to God. Come to Colossians again now. Verse number 23, the Bible says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not unto man. Do it joyfully. If you don't love what you're doing, find something that you love. Amen? Amen? Because if your heart is there, you will do a better job and a good job. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord, he shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For he serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? amen. We are not doing, yes he's paying, but... With all this, I'm blessed with, with all the job that you are blessed with by God. You are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He is your ultimate master. Whatever job. But you are serving Christ. Because that's your ministry. And you do it heartily. Amen? Amen? Knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. God says, I'm watching all that you do. Your master may not appreciate you because he or she is too busy. May It might have just slipped from their mind and they wanted to, but they did not. But I am watching and I am happy. You'll find that in book of Revelation, I guess. Um, this is something great. See Revelation chapter 3. Mm-hmm. Which is the Philadelphia church? Where is that? Pergamos, Smyrna, Titer, Ephesus. Okay. Verse 7. Chapter 3. Yes. Verse 7. Thank you so much. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write. These things saith he that is holy. He that is true. He that has the key of David. He that openeth and no man shuddeth. And shuddeth and no man openeth. You know what Jesus says? I know. Of course this is for the church. But it's applicable for every individual. I know thy words. Amen? Amen. People may not know it, but God knows it. He is watching over you. He is watching every moment of your life. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. What a great comfort it is. God knows my work. Amen. God knows it. People may, sometimes it may, it may be, just, it might just slip from the mind, but God knows this and He is watching. He is watching. But if you don't, then there is a judgment. Oh, yeah. Christians, as a judgment, if you are cheating your masters, as a judgment, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is Haha, no respects of person. There's no respect of person. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to have a good testimony. And I, 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 I believe with all my heart. I believe that everyone who has been blessed by God with job in any areas of life, I believe with all my heart. That you are faithful. And God is just reminding you one more time. Just continue it. And I know your works. Amen. Maybe you have been discouraged. Like, Pastor, I'm just being faithful. And I'm trying to do my best. And bringing, and I'm just giving my whole heart. But I have never been appreciated. Praise the Lord. God knows your heart. Amen. God knows thy work. And he appreciates what you do. Amen? God appreciates what you do. Then, masters, you may be a businessman. You may be owning a business. You may be having somebody work under you. Whoever you are. You maybe have subordinates under you. Maybe uh, some staff under you. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal. Sadly, uh, just a few, uh, few weeks back, uh, it, there was a, a big storm and my neighbor's tree just, uh, my neighbor's uh, jackfruit tree, the branch just fell on our roof and it broke the roof tiles of our home in, at 2 a.m. in the morning. And then I rush, my mom gives me a call, I rush up there and then, the, um, and my mom has already spoken to the neighbor and she has called some man to take off that jackfruit branch out of the house, which is over the roof. And, uh, and they do a hard work. Four guys came. They do a hard work, pulls everything, cuts the branches, throws out. Early morning. And now is the time to pay. And my neighbor takes 100 rupees and pays. 
That's bad. And the man who was an unbeliever, he's just like, ah. Oh. It takes about three hours to get that work done. Just paid hundred rupees. Such a hard work. What do you get with hundred rupees today? I felt bad. I took him to the side and I gave him extra. I felt bad. And he was happy. And as a Christian, this is what God has been very gracious to me. And God has been gracious to you. And if you're a master, God has been gracious. You own a business, you own whatever, and you have people working under you. You may be uh, uh, working for a government office and somebody is working under you. And you are supposed to supervise that job or you are a head of in some department and somebody is working under you. You may not be paying, but you are supervising them. And you're still a master then. And you're, not, you're supposed to treat them just as you want God to treat you. How will God be? What, what God thinks about me? Now if somebody comes and does the 10 minutes, 30 minutes work, yeah, he deserves 100 rupees. If he's working for a whole day, from morning till evening, you give him a little extra. He deserves it. Amen? Amen? He deserves it. Oh, yeah. People who come and do some work for me, I see that. Not trying to brag. I just see that I give more than they deserve. Just more than they deserve. And especially when it comes to Christians, I just see that no one blames me. I give more than they deserve. Just for the sake of testimony. I don't want someone to blame me. He doesn't pay me well. It can affect our testimonies. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal. God is not saying, hey, you know what? You as a Christian, give him more. No, no, no. God is not. God also knows everything. Amen? Amen. Just like last Sunday we heard, God did not tell Moses, take the snake with the mouth from the head. He said, he understands that we are fearful and if we take with the head, it will bite us. And God says, take that serpent with the tail. God understands. God is not saying, you lavishly pay that person. No, just an equal, just what he or she deserves. Amen? You don't have to give extra. No, 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 no. That is not. God understands. God understands. Just and equal. You see, God looks at every areas of our life. He understands us. He says, just, just, hey, you know what? I don't want you to give so much that you don't have for yourself. I don't want you to pay this, you know, unnecessarily. I know you're a Christian sometimes. Don't, just because you're a Christian, just don't give surplusly. You understand? But God is saying just and equal. Just what does that person, what is in the market? That, that's all. Don't give him less. That's what God is saying. He's working to feed his stomach and his family's needs. Amen? Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that he also have a master in heaven. Amen? We have a master in heaven. And how many of you like God to treat you? The way that you would want to treat someone who works for you. And if you would be gracious, God is always gracious. Amen? Now, God, no, 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 don't take this message in a wrong way, okay? I don't want you to go and open, empty your bank account and give it to all your servants and say, Pastor said it. No, <laughs> don't blame me. God is just saying, just and equal. What he deserves, what she deserves. I asked a woman to, if you can come and, uh, you know, I told one of my neighbor, can you just uh, find someone to help her cook in the kitchen for the Bible college only in the afternoon? 
And uh, I told and that person came in and then the lady, uh, the, the person brought another lady to cook and, and we, I, uh, we started having this talk and I asked, okay, so this is all that you need to do. Don't worry, you don't have to cook. You know, it's not a big thing. We're not having lots of, uh, recipe, uh, lots of food. Just rice, curry, vegetable and maybe sometime fish, maybe beef, maybe chicken or egg. You know, different thing, you know, different day. So, how much will you charge? And guess what that lady said? 500 rupees per day. I got a heart attack. I said, sorry madam. My boys cook better in that way. <laughs> Amen? Amen? 15,000 to cook just for the afternoon. <laughs> That's a, oh boy. <laughs> I said, no, thank you. My boys really cook well. See, they are all looking fat now. They came thin. Huh? Nangam, please stand. Look at him. He came very thin. Look at him. Sit. He's fat now. You see, these guys come very thin like that. And then, and then when they go home, and the mother right, calls up and says, Is this my son? I can't recognize him. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> okay. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Amen? God is a master. Verse number 9 in Ephesians chapter 6, final verse, and then we wind up. Exact in time, thank God. Verse number 9. And ye masters do the same things unto them. Forbearing threatenings. Don't threaten them. Knowing that your master also is in heaven. Neither is there respect of persons with him. So, dear friends, this is what God wants you to know. I trust and I pray that you are doing in such a way. I trust and pray, masters, you are giving just and equal. I, I hope and I pray that you know that God is your master and you are treating people who are working under or for or with you, knowing that God is watching you. And those who are working for or with and under somebody, you know that you are serving Christ through these. Okay? And God esteems you highly and God says, I know you. You are doing a good job. Keep it going. Amen? Ultimately, your ultimate desire ought to be, it doesn't matter. What matters is, I'm going to bring glory and honor to God through this ministry that God has given me. It's your ministry, my beloveds. Wherever the Lord has placed you, that is your ministry. Oh, I don't have a ministry. I don't get to preach. What you're doing is a ministry. And you've got to be faithful in what you have. Amen? Amen. Amen. What's that? <laughs> Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May you just bring glory and honor to God through what and everything that the Lord has blessed you with. Amen? Amen. And may people watch you and say, Wow, I want to be like that person. I want to be like that man. I want to be like that woman. What is so special in her? What is so special in him? And then they find out it's because of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Shall we pray? Brother Vinod, can you please pray? Maybe we all stand and pray.